penetration testing and vulnerability scanning. Let's begin. In the world of information security, just like in business, we want to avoid risk. Now, what exactly is risk? And to understand vulnerability scanning and penetration testing, we probably ought to start with risk. Now, to really understand risk, we ought to really take a look at the concept of what is a vulnerability. A vulnerability is like an egg, a raw egg, and the vulnerability for the egg would be its fairly fragile shell. And then I'd like you to imagine a 100 pound weight hanging by a rope over the egg and under the egg we have concrete. Now this 100 pounds dangling by a rope would be considered a threat. And if we cut that rope that's holding that weight in place, the weight would fall, meaning the threat would be activated. Gravity would do its work. And when the weight came in contact with the shell, which is our vulnerability, we would have a loss. And that's really what risk is all about. Risk is the potential for a threat to compromise or take advantage of or exploit a vulnerability resulting in some type of a loss. What is the likelihood of that weight actually falling and destroying the egg? And that's what risk is all about. So in information security, we want to mitigate or lessen the effectiveness of a threat against our vulnerabilities. And typically what we'll do, we'll implement countermeasures that don't get rid of the threat, they just get rid of the likelihood of that threat being effective against our vulnerability. In our egg example, perhaps our countermeasure is we build a solid steel table that's covering the egg. And then if the weight falls, it'll hit the table, which should be built and implemented securely enough so that the egg isn't damaged with its fragile shell. And that would be an example of mitigating risks. Now, one of the secrets of building a fortress of security to protect our information systems is first of all to identify what our vulnerabilities are. We could have misconfigurations that are allowing access without any controls in place. For example, a technical control of requiring one to log in before getting access to the system. If that was misconfigured and just anyone could connect and get in, that would be a vulnerability. Or if we had ports, for example, on end user machines that were open like TCP port 80, which implies that there's a web service waiting and listening on that device. That would be, in most cases, be a vulnerability that an attacker could leverage to get access to the system. So as a corporation, what we might want to do is periodically do vulnerability scanning. One of my favorite vulnerability scanners is called Nessus. And with a Nessus scan of our environment, we can do a credentialed or a non-credentialed scan. A credentialed scan allows the device running Nessus to actually connect to these devices, like Lois's computer right here, and log in. And doing a credentialed vulnerability scan gives the administrator more opportunity to be accurate in what it finds and also to find out additional information as opposed to just scanning for open ports by themselves. And if we did do a vulnerability scan and we didn't have the credentials to log in, that would be referred to as a non-credentialed vulnerability scan. And the goal of this game is to find out and discover, to be detective in nature regarding what vulnerabilities do exist on our systems so that we can then take corrective action to mitigate against threats that might take advantage of those vulnerabilities. And one of the key elements of vulnerability scanning is that it is passive. A vulnerability scan is not going to be injecting malicious software. It's not going to be bringing a server down when it finds a vulnerability. It's simply a passive, non-aggressive manner of discovering vulnerabilities on a system. Now, it doesn't mean, because it's passive, it doesn't mean that we're allowed to go ahead and do scanning of any network that we happen to be on. We'd also want to make sure that we have the proper authorization on any system to do vulnerability scanning. In a corporate environment, an unauthorized device doing a vulnerability scan would be considered aggressive and very likely would be against corporate policy. Now, while vulnerability scanning is considered passive in nature and not doing any damage to the network or system, on the far opposite scale, we have something called penetration testing, which is intended to do harm. Because penetration testing is going to do active attacks. So if you and I, for example, were hired as part of a penetration testing team to come in and do pen testing against this network and this system, it's very possible. We may start off with some warm-up exercises like vulnerability scanning to find out what vulnerabilities may exist. And then we're gonna break out our penetration testing tools which would go a step further and have the potential to actually compromise the system. Maybe take down a server or install malicious software on that server or get unauthorized access to an internal system. And one of the reasons a company might consider doing penetration testing is they want to actually verify whether or not their security controls can be bypassed. And if they are, they want to find out before the real attackers start taking advantage of their systems. So we want to actively test controls that are in place just to make sure they really are secure. 
to make sure that those countermeasures we've put in place to mitigate risk, to make sure that they're doing their jobs. And if the countermeasures are not doing their jobs, penetration testing could result in vulnerabilities that do exist on a system to literally be exploited and taken advantage of by the active penetration tests. I have had a great time and I'm glad you joined me for this video. I have a few recommendations for you if you'd like to learn more about some of these topics. CBT Nuggets offers a Security Plus course, a CISSP course, a course on certified ethical hacking. There's also a course called Penetration Testing with Linux Tools, which covers a couple of my favorite toolkits, including Backtrack and Kali Linux. So again, thanks for joining me. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.